So Japanese knives are made in Japan, but what about Japanese knives made in China? Okay, so this is a thing. There's lots of online companies now that are offering really well-made knives, quite beautiful knives, that are Japanese steel made in China. So I know these knives firsthand. I actually sell a line of knives that are just like these. We call them Kitsuni and we sell two different styles of them and they're a really, really nice knife. And the beauty for me is that I can offer them at a really, really great price to people. So, you know, I'm biased of that line because I've used it. So I wanted to try something completely different. So Q Knives, that is an online knife maker, uh, sent me a knife from China. I have no, well, it came from their factory or the, their, their uh, offices in Norway or somewhere like that. Um, but it's a Chinese made knife made from Japanese steel. And I wanted to try it a knife that I have no connection with, I have no skin in the game here, uh, and tried it against a knife actually that I do have skin in the game on. This is a, a Miyabi uh, Birchwood. It's a 101 layer knife. Uh, it's a handcrafted knife in Japan uh, out of the Miyabi factory. And I wanted to try it here against a Chinese made knife made with Japanese steel. So they sent me this knife to try. And it's quite a pretty looking knife. It's packaged beautifully, it's put together really nicely. And uh, there it is. So it's a layered looking knife. So something that I'm not totally sure of is this knife here has a lot of seeming layers, but I'm not sure if this is etched onto this blade. It kind of feels like it is where when this is 101 layers from Miyabi and you can feel that that layering in there you can see as it's made into the edge it, it like is almost dimpled along the edge here um, where the steel edging comes on um, it, it feels like uh, little tiny uh, like uh, wood ridges uh, if, if like on, on a, a grain of wood um, where this looks like, you know, a tattoo of some sort. It doesn't have anything. There's maybe a tiny bit of a ridge. No, not really on there. So, you know, it's a pretty looking knife uh, with the, the s kind of sketch on it, maybe. I could be completely wrong. But what my point there is that, you know, this one could be made with a lot more detail to it. I, I know that this is a forged knife this very well could be a stamped knife that's meant to look like a forged knife does that really matter in the day maybe maybe not performance will will determine that uh, and so what we are going to do now is kind of feel them a little bit of balance i'm going to tell you what i kind of feel the difference between them is you know it's a it's not a heavy knife it's a little bit and heavy, the metal is a little heavy. The handle that is like a, a Paca wood handle um, is a little bit light. I don't know if that has a full tang to it. That means that the, the metal comes all the way to the edge. It doesn't really feel like it does. Um, you know, where a knife like the Birchwood sits beautifully, beautifully balanced into your hand uh, and just kind of sits a little bit nicer. But, you know, that's not really a, a, a negative. Like I, it feels a little bit more comfortably, but not that much different. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, not a bad feeling knife. So let's have a try and have a feel. So these are two, like this is virtually a brand new knife. I've used it maybe a couple of times. This is brand new out of the package. We're gonna grab a, quite a soft tomato here and we are going to cut it in half. That is ridiculously sharp using that Miyabi Birchwood and using this Q knife. It's, it's much heavier off the top. If you were going to be using this as a, you know, a chef knife, an all day knife that you're using a lot, it weighs quite a bit more in your hand. And that's just, you know, between the two, I can really feel that. Yeah, it's, it's sharp. It doesn't peel through quite the same, but that's pretty darn good. That feels really nice. 
so there's more uh, edging, uh, sorry, like more grip on here. Like when I go through this with the birch wood, I can really feel it almost kind of tooth into there. Um, like it's, it's meaning business. It's not that it's serrated, but it almost has that kind of feeling that it's like, it's not going to um, dent into the skin. It just falls right through. And this guy here tried again, soft tomato. You know, yeah, it feels it feels great. So that's that's beautifully sharp. So what the the Chinese, a lot of the Chinese knife makers are are saying, anyways, and some of them are trying to authenticate this, is that the cutting core that they're using is a VG10 that is a very standard, very high quality cutting metal uh, steel from Japan, and they're getting the metal from Japan, and then it's being made in China. Uh, and, you know, I sell a lot of Chinese goods. Some of it can be crap. Some of it's extremely well made. I know there's a lot of negativity around China that if it's from China, it's of a lower quality. That's less and less the issue I find these days. There's a lot of really high quality stuff for the kitchen coming out of China. Um, you know, and it's working just fine. So I, I, I'm not negative towards this knife just because it's made in China. If this is a very, very good deal, and we'll talk about price here at the end, then that could be a really nice high performance knife for a really great price. So, you know, first off, this knife works really nicely. Uh, is it have anywhere near the fit and finish of, you know, a high-end Birchwood uh, Miyabi? No, obviously it doesn't. But, you know, are we getting what we're paying for? Okay, so depending on which country you're in, a birchwood knife is going to cost you anywhere from like 350 or 300 US dollars to 400 Canadian dollars, somewhere in that sort of range. Uh, it is made in Japan, it's 101 layers, it is of an SG2 steel, it is a 66 uh, on the hard, Rockwell hardness scale, um, it's got a real wooden birchwood handle, it's, it's an extraordinary knife. It's one of the best knife selling knives I've ever sold. Uh, it's a phenomenal knife. So comparatively, a knife that works wonderfully well, I'd say like going through this tomato, this is a beautiful knife. It, it works very, very well. This is $152. It was on Kickstarter. They had just done a big launch with it. Um, it is $19 of shipping from wherever it's going to come from. It's got kind of a plasticky handle. They say that it's got 40 some odd layers of steel in here that's kind of hard to really... Um, know if it is or not it doesn't really feel like it's actually truly layered but maybe it is i, I don't know i wasn't in the factory watching it um, but it feels good so is it worth 150 bucks you know a quick amazon search and you can find knives that are very similar for 85 dollars 100 dollars in the us so maybe it's a little bit higher than it should be uh it's got some fairly nice detail to it 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 feels fine in the hand um does it feel like Anything that I've, you know, in the Miyabi line that's made in Japan? No. Um, I would take a Miyabi definitely before I would take this guy. But we sell the line of Chinese made Japanese steel knives too. And, you know, personally I would buy a Miyabi before I buy one of those ones. But if I had, you know, one third the dollars in my hand to buy a really good quality knife, I would buy one of those ones. So for the dollars is what I'm kind of getting at. Um, you know, this guy might be a little bit of a pricey knife, but it's in the price range that I think is, is quite adequate. Okay, longevity. That's an issue. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get a bunch of potato. Potato, I like to chop up potatoes. I'm going to make some, you know, hash browns or, or breakfast potatoes that some people like to call them. Just cubed potatoes. I'll make a bunch of them. And then I'm going to do a paper test pre and post, and we're going to see how they stand up. Okay, before we start chopping a bunch of potatoes, I'm going to test these two knives on a piece of paper. So a piece of paper, a paper test, is the simplest test that you can possibly do. It kind of just tells you if the knife is sharp. If you've got any micro little chips in it, you're going to feel that going through the paper, which is really quite convenient if you're looking to sharpen a knife, if you're trying to find out where it is that you should focus on uh, creating that knife a new edge. Um, but generally, just to test a knife, where is your sharpness, Take the knife, and that knife, I, I would expect this knife to be as sharp as that. That is, that is wonderfully sharp. So that knife is sharpened beautifully. And this guy, 
Maybe, maybe it slides through a little bit, just a tiny bit easier. There's no real dullness in that. So a knife that I've used a lot in the kitchen is this guy here. Let's see, yeah, see it doesn't, it just kind of hits there a little bit. It is sharp, but it's not, it's not as, as piercing sharp. So that knife needs to be honed, not sharpened. It is sharp, as you can see, it's sharp, but it, it is not as piercing sharp. So the, both of these guys feel wonderfully sharp. I would say the way the, the birch wood just pulls through, it just kind of more melted butter like, but maybe I'm a tiny bit biased. I, I don't know, that's hard to say. It's, it's, it's slight. So anyways, gonna put these to work, gonna chop up a bunch of potatoes. We're gonna do this in kind of like super fast speed, so I'm not gonna bore you with chopping potatoes, um, but I'm gonna do you know a chunk on each and I'm going to do it just so in a standard way. I'm not gonna baby it, I'm gonna push through. Something that can dull a knife quite quickly is hitting your board really hard. I'm working on a big end grain slab of, of maple here. Uh, it's really nice on, on knives, but it can be dulling if I'm just gonna go slam, slam, slam. So I really try to slice down to a point where I'm kind of finishing my momentum as the knife is coming through what I'm chopping and hitting the board. So I'm not like snap, snap, snap on it. I'm just lightly hitting the board each time and I'll do that the same with each knife. So here we go. Okay, so processed the equal amount of potatoes with both of these knives, clean them up. Now I'm gonna do the same test. So that guy feels fantastic. This guy here. Hmm. Okay. So, okay, so there we go. There's the big difference. That's a, that's a very large difference. This is what they call a 66 on the Rockwell hardness scale. This is a 62 on the Rockwell hardness scale. And it's a very geeky term, Rockwell hardness scale, but it is how they measure how hard the steel is. And something about Japanese knives, primarily, gen generally, is that they use a really hard steel. So they're some of the hardest steel on the market. And the Birchwood uses a really hard steel, 66. It's really high. Um, I average for, for a Western style knife that you'll get from like a, a, a Verstoff or a Zwilling is going to be kind of 64, 63. This guy here is a 62. Um, this needs to be honed. So I've cut the potatoes, this guy here and honing using a rod. So not sharpening, but just giving it a pull on the steel. That's going to help a ton. So, so it's still sharper. Yeah, so that helps. So more maintenance is gonna be needed. Is that a big deal? I don't know, that's for you to decide. But you've got a harder steel. This is going to keep its edge longer. Uh, anything that's going to be, you know, 65, 64 and above is going to be really hard and hold its edge really, really well. The layering on here has more texture, which is advantageous when I'm cutting potatoes. Things don't stick to the edge. So when you have a Damascus style, when you have the, all the wavy pattern on the edge of a uh, Japanese knife, it's beautiful, but it isn't really necessary. 
it's there as an aesthetic. However, the advantage to it is that it, if it's not smooth, like this knife is, this is perfectly smooth, it will keep things from sticking. Things will fall way easier when you have a layered knife. So that's a technical advantage, um, not precisely necessary. Sometimes you'll see when you have a Western knife particularly that is forged flat or even stamped, they'll ground a little um, edging into it and a, like what they call a hollow ground where you have like you know individual little scores out of the blade. Same idea, what it's doing is that it's, it's stopping uh, vegetables from sticking to the side of the blade. This guy didn't really do a whole lot and he's not gonna do a whole lot. It's just a pretty looking pattern on here. If it's layered or not layered, it's not really doing the same sort of job. Uh, so technically I really like that. So the big question though, you know, you've got a knife for twice the money and you know, you could go to a knife like in Miyabi that does Co that is only gonna be probably 50 or $60 above. I've tested the Co against the Birchwood and they're very similar in the way they work. The hardness of the blade is, is just a, a slight little bit softer, but it has a really nice balance and it works a lot like any of the other Miyabis. So you can get knives uh, that are made in Japan that are gonna be similar in price. That may be an advantage to you. You may enjoy that, you know, or you're gonna save your pennies and you're gonna buy a Japanese steel made in China. Uh, the fit and finish to this knife, um, Q knives as I was saying, it's very nice. They've made a really beautiful knife. I have said at the beginning, I also carry a Chinese made Japanese steel knife in our stores. The manufacturing is impeccable. They make a beautiful, beautiful knife and the finishing is, is gorgeous. And I actually use one of our own chef knives at home all the time and I'm impressed with it. Do I like it as much as a Miyabi? No, I don't. It's not the same knife. It just isn't. It doesn't have the same kind of workmanship over time. It starts to wear a little bit sooner. Uh, you can see that within the handle, the discoloration over time, it starts to fade just a tiny bit. So I haven't found a Chinese knife yet, Japanese steel, a high quality, that has had a, a really fantastic life. I actually have a birchwood knife like this in our kitchen, in our Victoria store where we teach classes. It's probably been used 10,000 times. It has so much wear and tear on it and it's still one of the number one knives in our kitchen. It's got incredible longevity. So these are all just anecdotal from, from me and my experience. It's very hard to put these to an absolutely perfect, rigorous scientific test. Um, you know, I'm just seeing that I really enjoy what's being made out of China. I like the value that we're getting, but I don't yet see that they are com truly competing with Japanese knives. They're trying to get there and maybe they will, but up until now, I think if you're looking for great value in a high performance knife, excellent, good way to go for a Chinese made steel. But if you're really looking for the real McCoy, then a Japanese blade is the way to go. So I hope that helps. Any questions, please throw them below. Thank you very much. <music>